Okay, guys, this should be a pretty fast exercise, a couple, two or three days um, to explore the principle of design unity. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an abstract work of art where we merge two black and white patterns together and then using um, color.adobe.com and um, some color themes, you're going to colorize those, those new sort of blended patterns with the idea and thought of unity. Um, which is also known as harmony in mind. So um, the first thing we need to do, and if we're following the directions, and they're very simple directions this time, choose two patterns from within the given folder. So here is my given folder. And these are the patterns you have to choose from. Yes, there are only, what is that, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, and some will work better together with others. I suggest not using choosing two that are sort of sphere-like like this and this one. Don't choose two that are sort of checkered either. Um, choosing the sort of cow pattern and the zebra pattern probably won't, won't work out too well. Um, and choosing polka dots on top of polka dots probably won't work out very well either. So what we're trying to do is create these sort of enclosed spaces, pretty randomized with the two patterns so that we can colorize um, the white areas to create a, a sense of unity through not only pattern, and shape but through excuse me through color so um i'm going to go into let's see i'll probably have to download these so i'm going to choose let's try this time i've done one before i'm going to try uh, perspective 01 and i'm going to blend it with the zebra pattern so let me get those into photoshop and we'll go from there or excuse me photo p so what I'm going to do in photo P is open from computer and I'm going to control click and open both of these at the same time, which will open two separate tabs. Now I have zebra um, and I'm taking sort of mental note. I'm looking at this at 50% and I have perspective. I'm looking at this at hundred percent. So I'm going to assume zebra is larger than perspective. What we want to do is we want to take the larger one and copy and paste it to the smaller one. Okay, so um, again, because this is 100% and this is 50%, I'm going to guess that the zebra pattern is bigger. So I'm going to copy and paste perspective. And we'll try if it doesn't work. You can do it the other way around. I'm going to select all, copy, go to zebra, and paste. Pretty simple. Okay, so you can see that that's a lot smaller. So what we want to do, again, we want to bring the bigger one into the smaller one so, so we can scale down rather than scale up. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select all of this, all. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Now you can see we have this giant zebra pattern. Scale it down, Control Alt T to get our free transform. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift while I'm scaling from the corner to scale it uniformly, but we don't want to go inside too far. We have to keep it outside of the edges. And now that we have that, we want to blend it using a blend mode of multiply so we can see both at the same time. So now we have multiply, and that's pretty interesting right there. Um, also, what I'm going to do, and I meant to do that before, is I'm going to change these, this background. It has some grays in it. I want it to be totally black and white, so um, you don't need to do this. I'll do this permanently with this file that I'm going to give you, but just so you know, I'm going to sort of change the levels. In fact, I will do that as I hit pause. Now that bottom layer is a little more black and white. The other thing you can do is try to rotate your file and just see if you get something a little more interesting. Again, I brought it down so small that um, it, it would have to be like something like this so it stays inside the edges. This is sort of, I don't like this as much because it feels like the flow of those zebra stripes are chasing or following the lines in my background layer. Um, even this so much more so. I sort of like it that it's what it's crossing them a little bit. So I'm going to leave it the way it was. And now that I have that, I'm going to just going to merge them down. So control E. Now I have them in one layer. Okay. And then again, in the directions, you have to go to the other given folder, which looks like this. It's called color themes and download one of these themes to use. Now keep in mind, I'm looking at these um, seven color themes 
um, as a preview thumbnail, large thumbnail in my Google Drive, and it's not showing all five colors that I'm going to use. So that could be a little frustrating. Make sure that when you download these, you might want to download all of them, get them into a folder and take a look at each one before you make a decision. Um, I'm going to just try this Adobe Color Fashion 1, and I'm going to download that from my drive and it should take me to unity i already have it in in this folder here so i'm just going to say we'll click okay save go to photo p and now i'm going to open that up so file open <clears throat> excuse me and this is it right here double adobe color fashion and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to copy and paste that into my working file as well which is my perspective on one psd now so again select all control a control c to copy Perspective 01 and Control V to paste. Now that's super big. I'm going to bring that down. And all we're doing with this thing, so I hit Control Alt T, holding down Shift. Even though it doesn't really matter if we squash, or squash and stretch this, we want to have access to those colors. <clears throat> I'm going to go up to my swatches. And with my color picker, I'm going to go boom, 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 and boom. And now all these tie, five top swatches are there, and I'm just going to hide that layer. And now comes the time when we want to sort of paint inside of all of the white. This could take some time. You have to have patience. Um, in the end, I think you'll come up with something pretty cool. You can always go back and erase and, um, and add more or change some colors if you want. But remember to try to keep the five colors that you've chosen as the theme because that will really create this unifying feel to this abstract um, digital image. So um, the other thing you need to do is think about creating a center of interest and also remember the rule of thirds. So I'm looking, okay, do I want to create a center of interest around in here, down in here, over in here, or up in here? I sort of like over in here because there's some interesting overlapping going right there. And now I'm looking at, okay, what do I want to use to create that center of interest? Well, I have three colors that are sort of on the blue side, two colors that are pinkish, reddish. I want to do this sort of contrast between the blues, <clears throat> which are the cooler colors and the warmer colors, pink and red. So I might decide to put a lot of um, pink and red in this area and then a lot more cool colors around going away from it so that the center of interest or the focal point is right here. So what we want to do is for each of the five colors that we're going to use, I'm going to create a new layer above my background. So I'm going to create a new empty layer here. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to call this one pink for lack of a better term. And I'm, now I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to choose the pink color, which I could see as soon as I clicked on that, it, it became my foreground color. And now I'm going to zoom in with my zoom tool and I'm sort of looking at, I might even grab guides. And go okay where do i want my center of interest area to be let's say let's make it around in here somewhere and then i'm going to sort of fade things out from there um, we can see some jpeg artifacts in there we're not really too worried about that for this project but again if i get my brush i'm in my pink layer and i change very important i change this layer to multiply before i even start painting so now when i start painting the black shows through because we are multiplying that color with black which will equal black so again i'm going to sort of jump around here i'm going to create another layer i'm going to call this one red just a different shape between a pink and then if i choose this red color and i start painting on red we'll see a subtle oh we have to make it multiply make a subtle change here and here and then we can just sort of start doing whatever we want. It really doesn't matter. You can be totally random with this with, again, the overriding idea that we want to somehow create this center of interest. I'm going to do a light blue. Let's call this one light blue. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of that blue around here. Again, I can go over these edges and change that to multiply. Um, add one here, go back to my red. Don't forget to choose the red color. I'll make this red. I'm going to go back to pink. So this is a matter of, you can do, you can go through and do one color all the way through if you really want to, if you know what you're doing, if you have an idea. 
Um, right now, I'm just sort of feeling my way through this process. And occasionally, I'll zoom back out just to see where we're at, see what it looks like, um, and then zoom back in and, and keep going from there. So I'm not going to bore you by doing this whole image. Um, I'm going to hit pause right now, and I will paste this final image into the direction so you can see how it goes. Um, yeah, so eventually we're going to have a nice PSD file you're going to want to save out as a PSD. Then you're going to want to flatten into a JPEG, and I want you to submit that JPEG.